So we left off last time with introducing the psych chart as a graphical representation of the different relationships of moist air. So what we use this for really is plotting different what we call states or conditions of air. Where we are, where we want to be uh, for design purposes or looking at outside air or zone conditions or mixing air. So as an example, this is a state and this is another state. When we connect them through some process, that, that's, that's something that we can either talk qualitative about to say this is a humidification and sensible heating process or quantitatively once we understand what the labels and the axes represent. So unlike a typical Cartesian chart where we're looking at x and y axes, we have many more crammed into this chart here which make it very dense, very useful, but also a bit confusing. So we're going to go over the labels here as to what they represent and how to read the psych chart. The first one is the, the most intuitive which is, is temperature or dry bulb temperature. So this is that sensible temperature that we talked about we can feel with our skin and we would also use a basic thermometer to measure. So from the left to the right goes from decreasing to increasing temperature and if you were to put a vertical line like we have here any of the points on that vertical line are going to have the same dry bulb temperature. So the way you read this is if you had two states and here you can see we're going from a state of less dry bulb temperature from left to the right we've gone from 65 to 105 degrees Fahrenheit or we have a delta of 40 degrees Fahrenheit dry bulb temperature. Going to the y-axis now we're introducing moisture and we call this absolute moisture. Uh, you'll see why in uh, a moment but what we're looking at is how much moisture is actually entrained in the air. So that can be represented with it, with what's called the humidity ratio and those are some of the units that you're going to see here which is how much po pounds of moisture per pound of dry air we have. There can also be a unit of grains of moisture but in both cases we're looking at how much actual moisture is, is trapped in the air. So if we look at our example here you can see that we're not changing how much moisture is in the air just by straight heating the air. So we would say that there's, there, there's a delta of, of zero pounds of moisture per pound of dry air change. Now once we start looking at these curves, it, it gets a little bit more complex. This is called relative humidity, and it goes from 0% to 100%. That's a pretty key principle in psychrometrics, where when you get the air hotter, you can actually have that air hold more moisture. So that's why you need to talk about not just absolute moisture, or absolute humidity but also relative humidity. So with that same example where we didn't have any change in absolute humidity, we are having a change in relative humidity because we're going from a colder temperature of 65 where we had a 40 to 50 percent relative humidity or, or RH to now we're at 105 degrees and even though we haven't changed how much moisture is physically in the air, we have a relative humidity of 10 to 20 percent relative humidity because we could hold more moisture in that air now that it's hotter. So that explains a lot of the processes that we have with air conditioning, say, and also the, s the shape of this site chart. We can also talk about wet bulb temperature, and we differentiate dry and wet bulb temperature based on how we're measuring that air. So if you were to take a, a standard thermometer, if you were to wrap some cloth around it, wet that cloth, attach it to a, a rope and sling it around your head. That's actually a psychrometric tool called a sling psychrometer. And the reason that you do that is that if you have really dry air, then a lot of that water that's around that wick and that cloth is going to evaporate into the air and it's going to cool that thermometer head down and you're actually going to see less temperature than the dry bulb temperature in the air. Now if you were at saturated and it was Atlanta, Georgia on a hot day, there's nowhere for that moisture on the wick to go. There's nowhere for that water to evaporate to. So your dry bulb temperature and your wet bulb temperature are going to be about the same. So another way that we, we might talk about that is the, the dew point. So when you think about morning dew and how that when the air gets colder at night some of that moisture actually condenses out of the air and then later in the day it'll as the morning heats up it'll evaporate off of the blades of grass and go back into the air. But that dew point is what we talk about where the dry bulb equals the wet bulb, which is also at that 100% relative humidity line.
So another way that we talk about not just states but processes is with things like the sensible heat ratio. So sometimes in, in psych charts you might get a wheel at the top here or you might have lines on the outside that say SHR but in either case we're talking about the sensible heat as a ratio of the total heat. So that'll tell you how much how much latent energy versus sensible energy is going into that process. So there's a couple examples here what you do is you line up the angle of your process and match it with this wheel or with whatever units are represented on the chart and we can talk in terms of say a sensible heat ratio of 0.5 versus here you see this flat one of 1.0 which is telling you that all of the all of the process is characterizing sensible heat change So another term that we're going to introduce in a different video because of the, the kind of complexity and a little bit of the background is, is enthalpy. So we're going to talk about that in the next video. But just as one caveat to what we've discussed so far is we're looking at a sea level psych chart. You can see that in the top left here, altitude sea level. So one thing to keep in mind is that when you're using the psych chart, you're going to see that at different altitudes, the density of the air changes and some of these units shift around a little bit. So you're, you're going to want to go to your source where you get your psych chart, say ASHRAE, and they're going to have different altitudes and also different zoomed in ranges of, of some of the units. But just be aware that at different altitudes, some of these units will shift around. And in, this, uh, in these videos, we're going to look at sea level psych charts. So in the next video, we're going to dig a little bit into more detail about what is enthalpy and how is it represented on the psych chart.